Hi guys, Gadget Girl Kylie here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Wonder Book, Book of Spells. And we're continuing on now, and I'm going to select Chapter 2, Part 1. Chapter 2, Part 1. You've made great progress. Time for Chapter 2. Remember, you don't read this spell book like a muggle book. Point your wand at the glowing words, then pull the T button to start reading. It's time to move text. on to more complex magic. In this chapter, we will cover a range of challenging and at times dangerous new spells. Keep your wits about you in this chapter, and soon you'll master new magical skills from revealing invisible ink or conjuring flocks of birds from your wand to the art of magical fire making. Ooh, fire. There we have it. Turn the page to learn the first spell in this chapter. Just wondering if I could do anything with those birds. But no. The fire making spell. We'll first learn a bit about the spell, then you can try casting it. Remember, you need to use your wand to read. Point at the glowing words, hold the T button and pull the words up off the page. Remember guys, the eye camera doesn't pick up when I'm trying to cast the spell. I have to go through trying to say it before I can unlock the wand action. I cannot skip that. Um, so I'll have to attempt it. It's all in the video description, so always read the video description before watching, guys, if you've come to this episode without seeing the others. From lighting a warm hearth to igniting a Christmas pudding, the fire-making spell is always useful around the wizarding household. However, the ability to produce fire with the flick of a wand can be dangerous to your fellow students, and worse, your books. A pair of dragonhide gloves is therefore recommended for this lesson. Ooh. More careless students might also like to brush up on any hair regrowing spells that they might know. That's some pretty cool gloves, eh? Look at that! There's a story about this spell! Pull up the glowing words on the page to find out what it is. Ready to begin reading the story? Spectacular though it is, students are warned that irresponsible use of the fire-making spell can have serious consequences. Take one ill-fated performance of Malachry's classic wizarding play, Alas, I Have Transfigured My Feet. <laughs> History does not record the names of the actors, which is perhaps for the best. Since by halfway through the first act, the audience had taken to throwing, Looks like your spellbook is testing you again. What do you think the audience threw at the actors? Point at one of the tabs, Pumpkins. hold the button and slide it out. Oh yes! The audience have taken to throwing pumpkins. Undeterred, the actor playing Capo began the famous foot transfiguration scene. By this time, the special effects wizard hidden under the stage was apparently as bored as the audience. <laughs> and there decided he is. to replace the traditional puff of yellow smoke with a huge eruption of... What do you think he conjured up? Oh yes! A fire. huge eruption of fire from his wand! Not good! The stage will go on fire! Oh there we go and it has! <laughs> the audience were suitably impressed and their cheering only increased when the curtains caught a light! And the effects wizard began vainly trying to put out the flames while dodging hexes from the play's director. With the rest of the cast fleeing in panic, the actor playing Capo took this as his moment to shine. Casting a 
Now what spell would you cast for your big moment in a burning theater? Casting a flame freezing charm, he began the play's rousing final speech, protected from the fire, now engulfing the stage. I'm looking pretty cool at the same time. Unfortunately, his no doubt stirring delivery was lost in the confusion as the audience abandoned the theater. And the ill-prepared effects wizard tried desperately to remember the flame-freezing charm for himself. Show off young students should take heed. Cast your fire-making spell with care. Indeed. Don't want my room going on fire. Well, now you've learned a little about its dangers. Aren't you eager to try the fire-making spell for yourself? With caution, oh, yes. Our vandal has scribbled all over your book again. They've probably left you some nasty, magical surprise. Ah, go on then. Point your wand at the scribble and pull it up. Oh, it's a dragon and it's come alive. I love dragons. Merlin's beard. A paper dragon. This spell book is packed full of surprises, all right. Now look what's happened. Perhaps one of the spells you've learned so far can put out the fire. You do realize this book is school property. Wave your hands over the book to put out that fire. Well done. There's still some soot on there. Clear it all up with your hands or the school librarian will never let me hear the end of it. Good as new. Fortunately, your book is protected by powerful enchantments for exactly this reason. Now, if you've quite finished fooling around, now you know all about fire making, time to try casting it. Turn the page when you're ready to learn how to cast the spell. Okay. Let's attempt this. Remember that the camera doesn't pick up me saying this, so I still have to go through the process of saying the spell three times, and then um, I can move on, basically. Time to learn to cast the spell. Uh, do I need to do... Uh... That's it. Now, just flick your wand sharply down towards the book to cast. There we go. Open it's got the, the door. gates open, but where is the incantation? Tilt up your book and have a look down that hole. Here it comes. Incendio! The incantation to produce fire from your wand is incendio. Clear your mind... Grip your wand firmly and say it now. One, two, three. Incendio! I can't hear you. Try saying the incantation. Incendio! Louder. Try saying the incantation aloud. Incendio! Never mind, we can try that later. See, he needs to say that before I can move on. It doesn't pick it up no matter how loud I say it, guys. But you don't need to say now it to cast a spell. To learn the wand Just need the action. Pull up the gesture diagram from the page. The fire making spell uses three movements a straight line to the right, then diagonally down and left, then right again. So it's like drawing a letter Z. Well done. Now make the gesture once more, this time from memory. Incendio! Uh-huh. Brilliant! You've created fire, a valuable skill for any wizard. Now, try flicking your wand forward to send out a rush of fire. That's it. You'll Feel need to, the to flick the flame. fire accurately, so keep flicking until you've got the hang of it. Excellent. 
You're a dab hand at the fire-making spell. Let's give your skills a real workout. Turn the page. Now let's see you handle a more challenging task. Your spellbook is going to conjure up a place for you to practice fire-making safely. Pull up the glowing picture to start practicing this spell. Oh god, I don't want to burn my house down. It's time to practice flicking fire from your wand. See how fast and accurate you can be with your spell casting. Incendio. Uh, Ooh. that spell won't help you here. Incendio. Uh, I don't think that'll work. Oh, okay. It's taking me into a safe area. It's just it was taking a while, so I wasn't sure what was going on then. The place is full of creatures. These paper pests can be a real nuisance, so make sure you get rid of them all with your fire-making spell. Use your fire flicking technique to burn away all the paper creatures. I'll be giving out house points depending on how fast and accurate you are in this task. Ah, creepy crawlies. Get rid of them. Incendio! <laughs> well done. Now, aim carefully and see how many you can get rid of. Nice wand work. Excellent spell casting. Excellent. There we go. More to get, I see. Ah, butterflies. Remember, this is just bewitched paper. Don't let me catch you trying this spell on the real thing. Oh, no! Please respect the classroom furnishings. Excellent spell. <laughs> Set <testing>. things on fire, guys! <laughs> Oops. A fire-breathing paper dragon. Seems a bit impractical. Would you please stop destroying the classroom? I might have to deduct points next time. Okay, I'm gonna wait till it swoops around. Till the left seems to be the best time to hit it. Good shot. That's enough vandalism. I'm taking five house points for that. Oh! Excellent. You I lost five house, house points. points. Time to find out how well you did. Not very well. Still got a trophy though, so... Here's a wizarding photograph as a memento. There you are, casting the fire-making spell like an old hand. Well done. Take ten house points for that. Well done indeed. Impressive work. When you're ready, turn the page to move on to the next spell. Is that bit new though? Have we read that bit? Let's see. <clears throat> it's time yes, to practice flicking fire from your wand. Let's turn the page then. Bird conjuring charm. Oh, the bird conjuring charm. This charm is one of my favourites. Pull up the glowing text to read what our esteemed author had to say about bird conjuring. The bird conjuring charm conjures a small flock of birds from the end of the wand. It's important to remember that your conjured creatures are not real animals. The more accomplished you become at the spells that create them, the more real the animals will appear. But you will be disappointed if you try to keep your creations as pets. They are mere phantoms of your own making. Ooh, that's cool. I'm excited to see yeah, this we've spell. We've got an extra note with new information from Miranda. Pull it up to read it, or just turn the page if you want to get casting the spell. Of course, creating any living creature out of thin air is immensely difficult. This spellbook is concerned with practical instruction and not with theory. 
but your teacher will be able to explain the principle of artificianimate quasi-dominance. Which will help you understand some of the many things that can go wrong when attempting to conjure animals from nothing. Severed heads, unidentifiable stumps, terrifying frog-rabbit mutations all have been created to the dismay of those who oh, made them. Oh, it's cute and weird. And the horror of those who found them hidden under cushions. However, for reasons that are still not fully understood, research continues in the Department of Mysteries in the Ministry of Magic. Two categories of creature are much easier to create from nothing than any other. Birds and snakes. Oh, look at that, another collectible. Let's turn the page then. There we are. On this page, we'll cover the wand gesture and incantation for bird conjuring. We'll learn the incantation first. Pull up the illustration on the page. So again, we'll have to go through this a few times before I can move on and get the wand action. Avis. To conjure birds from thin air, you must learn the correct incantation. Avis. Ready? Say the incantation. One, two, three. Arvis! I can't hear you. Try saying the incantation. Arvis! Try saying it one more time. Arvis! Oh, trying to cast the spell non verbally, are we? Time to learn the wand gesture for this spell. Pull up the gesture diagram. The bird conjuring charm calls for two smooth bumps from left to right with your wand. Be careful to point your wand away from your face. This spell can go off with quite a bang. Good. Do that once more, but this time without any help. Good. That's it. Well done. Wonderful conjuring. Take a moment to admire your spell work. Of course, you can't control the birds, not with this spell alone, but if you wave your arms, you can play with them. Oh, they've spotted a bug. Conjured birds will chase off creepy crawlies. Remember that for this chapter's test. It might just come in handy. Now, if you stay very still, you'll find your new feathered friends are quite happy to come and sit on your book. Oh, what beautiful plumage. Excellent work. The birds will disappear in their own time, or you can press the circle button. Oh, it seems our magical vandal has left you another message. Aha! The Apugno Jinx! Ooh. The Apugno Jinx. Since you seem to have discovered it, I suppose there's no harm telling you. This jinx causes your conjured birds to attack anything you flick your wand at. Come on, if you're going to try out this jinx, cast Avis to begin. Avis! I'm going to let you try the jinx this once, so try flicking your wand at that cat. Don't worry, your birds won't do him any harm. There you are! Your feathered friends have become a flock of fearful <laughs> furies. Oh, you've certainly turned the tables on this cat. That's it. Oh, poor kitty. It's getting beaten up. Oh, honestly. Go on then, finish him off. That's it, he's off. Now, you won't be able to use a pugno anywhere else. You might need to conjure birds in this chapter's test, but you won't need to control them. Well, you seem to have mastered all aspects of bird conjuring. Remember, you won't be able to use a pugno to control the birds anywhere but here. Now for part two of this chapter. Just close the book to select part two.
Remember, just point your wand at the book. Then pull the T button to choose what to do next. Ready for the next part? Point your wand at Chapter 2, Part 2 and press the Move button. Okay then guys, I'll stop this episode here. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more of my Wonder Book, Book of Spells Let's Play. You have been watching Gadget Girl Kylie and take it easy guys.